Giants spending money in the middle of a downturn. Pros get new contracts, which I don't think matter. Pros closet stops buying bikes and companies are starting to let more and more people go. Lots of news, let's talk about it. Hey everyone, Josh here again with Daily Mountain Bike Rider. And today I wanna to give you kind of a recap of the last week of all the interesting news and stuff going on in the bike industry. I realize there are so many things going on, some of which connect together, and I wish somebody would just summarize what in the world has happened in the world of the bicycle industry this week. So with that, let's jump in. First up, big headline, which is very interesting, is that Giant spends $20 million to buy a minority share in stages. This is a lot of money to be spending with the uneasiness of the bike market, but Giant is buying into this company that you may have heard of. They make crank power meters. That's how I know them. They also have like GPS computers, but the big thing that Giant says is that its strategy is to expand Giant's group presence with the indoor cycling market, which I find interesting because the indoor cycling market, since COVID's kind of gone down, it was big during COVID. And I just find it interesting that a company as big as Giant, the world's biggest bike manufacturer, thinks this is a good move. I'll be curious to see if this actually takes off, if they use stages to keep making indoor cycles or if it falls flat. Moving on to news that's all over Pinkbike because this is what Pinkbike is all about, is pros, pros, pros getting new contracts. The one I thought was most interesting was Jesse Melamed. If you don't know this guy, he was the best EWS racer, the Enduro World Series, which is the type of writing I like. But you'll see pros from all over the world in all different disciplines, downhill, road riding, you'll see they join these new teams. And I'll be honest, I just think it's kind of hilarious and doesn't really matter that much. And, and here's my point. Take a sport like soccer. I don't really like soccer, but if a player leaves one team and goes to another, that's a big deal because while the player can be really good, they need good players around them in order to win championships, right? And a good player can play in a team and not do well. But when it comes to mountain biking or cycling in general, a person really performs individually. Yes, there are team categories, but who really cares? Would you rather have the fastest team and you not actually get any top places? Or would you like to be the fastest racer? So I find this interesting because Jesse is now on the Canyon team, which is good for him. And all of his sponsors are basically different. The only ones that he carries over, I think, are Maxxis. And literally every part of this bike is now different. And the question comes, is that going to affect his racing? Is it gonna affect him being the fastest racer out there? And I think the answer is absolutely not. The only thing that this means is that he is now making more money, which is a good thing for him. I'm not in any way being negative about that, but we shouldn't celebrate all these switches. It'd be like celebrating a soccer team that used to have a logo that said, I don't know, Rice Krispie Treats, and now says Cocoa Puffs. We all know Cocoa Cuffs, Puffs are better, but we shouldn't get excited about it because it's not gonna change this person's career anymore. I mean, think about Aaron Gwynn, right? Like he rides for um, Trek bikes. No, sorry, he used to ride for Trek bikes. No, 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 he rides for Specialized. No, it's not Specialized anymore, it's YT? No, that was the last one. Oh, it's intense. See, this guy has turned over bike company after bike company after bike company, and he uses even interesting wheels. Like, this is his bike right now, it's an intense. This has Maxxis tires on it, because that's what we all want. But he uses V tires. And as I looked at their tires, I went, wait a second, that looks just like a Maxxis Minion DHF because he is getting sponsored by a company that's creating almost the same product so that he can perform the same. And I just have to laugh a little bit because I just go, at the end of the day, I don't really think it matters that much. These pros are just making more money and the sponsors on their shirts, I don't think it's worth the money because I don't think it's bringing that much advertising. I'm not gonna go buy V tires. I have a pair on this bike right here. I think they're fine, but access work. All right, I gotta move on. Also talk about pro riders too much is that the Rad Power CEO came out and said, we recognize that we have made mistakes. If you don't know, this is really interesting news because Rad Power is kind of the first company in America to make cheap entry-level e-bikes with throttles. These are class two e-bikes. That's what I've made videos all about, how these all these e-bikes are the same, literally all the same components as Rad e-bikes. And I've noticed these things are dangerous. People think they're just like a normal bike, but you can get into hairy situations where you go faster than you're comfortable with. It's a heavy, cumbersome bike with low quality brakes and parts. They're not terribly low quality, but they're not great. And this article goes on to say that the new CEO of Rad Power Bikes is apologizing because they have some lawsuits on their hands for unfortunately a 12 year old girl who died. And if you read into this story, she had a helmet on, she was riding on the back of one of her friend's e-bikes. They went up a big hill and then went down it and they both fell off the e-bike and she just hit her head wrong. Uh, it's sad because one, condolences to the family, and two, it's a reminder that life is fragile and in all cycling, whether it be road biking, mountain biking, whatever your discipline, getting and falling in just the wrong spot means you could lose your life, which is 
super tragic. But along with that, I think it's an important uh, reminder for anybody who has an e-bike or has kids or is just not an experienced rider is please don't get in over your head. Don't go up hills too big or go too fast and warn people when they get on e-bikes. I always do like, hey, this is kind of sketchy. So just a reason I kind of like sticking to regular bikes. Speaking of used e-bikes, Pro's Closet keeps having more news. And this time I heard from a bunch of you and thank you for writing in. If you have more news or information, please let me know. I'd love to be able to share it. Some of you wrote in some pretty juicy information, but the Pro's Closet is currently not buying bikes. And what I mean by that is they will buy your bike. You can um, go through the whole process of sell and trade and it's pretty thorough of like taking pictures. So don't think you can just do it easily. Um, but right now they're not offering cash. They're only offering in-store credit so that you can use that money to buy another bike. And the prices that they're giving are super, super low and not great, which isn't surprising. Their bikes are very high. The market is very low. But another interesting thing is that they've made a big change and that they are using their warehouse bike shop as a test retail location. I don't see this as much as a long-term strategy. Maybe it is after this, but realizing that they have over 3,000 bikes in their Denver location with seven to 8,000 parts and accessories. And my guess is they really want to sell these bikes and realize some people would rather come and take a look at them instead of just looking at pictures online. Interesting move as I'm sure they're hemorrhaging money and hoping to make some of it back with the load of inventory. So we'll see if that pans out. And last but not least, you might have noticed the thumbnail of this picture that includes a certain company. I won't mention them by name, but I've had not one, not two, I've had three different people mention that a big company, not specialized, but kind of like them, are starting to let people go. And they're not letting them go like a mass layoff and putting out a notice about it to the media. They're doing it undercover and word on the street is more layoffs are coming and everybody is speculating in the next month or two when that's actually going to happen. So while I can't point out names or show the dialogues that I have on Instagram, thank you for those of you who did reach out. Mark my words, I think we're going to see more and more larger companies and then in turn smaller companies having to let employees go, try to make ends meet in this tough time. All right, that's it for the news this week. Again, if you have any other thoughts or comments or things you want me to know about, please shoot me a message on Instagram or shoot me an email. You know what time it is. Don't spend too much time watching a guy talk about bike news in his garage. Get out there, ride your bike, and make sure you do it every day. If you're still watching, uh, I need your help. If you have insider information, if you're in the industry, I will keep your name, your company private even, but I want to know what's going on so that I can share it with the rest of you who work at different companies and really so the average Joes like me and you know when to get sweet deals on bikes or parts. So follow me on Instagram, shoot me a DM, send me an email. Heck, I'll give you my phone number. We can have a phone call, but let's let people know what in the world's actually going on. All right, you can probably click away now. Bye.